Hey guys, today we're going to be checking out this Microtik switch. This is the RB5009 switch. It's very tiny as you can tell. So you can see we have the information about the switch. And here it is. This is one of the nicest Microtik switches I've ever seen. It is very solidly built. As you can see, it comes with a power supply. This thing has 10 options to power. You have the DC, you have the other DC, and you can power it over any of these PoE ports as well, which is really cool. The design is basically a massive heatsink, which is also really cool. And the reason I purchased this switch is because it has SFE Plus in, which is 10 gig, a 2.5 gig port, and a bunch of PoE, um, just standard one gig ethernet ports. Okay, so I have turned this into bridge mode. I have changed my password and applied the configuration. Okay, so I've just gotten the switch fully configured. Um, basically, these ports are going to be for cameras. This will be the access point. This will be the point-to-point -point link. This, uh, this port two and the 2.5 gig will be spares just in case I need uh, other connections in the future. So next, I'm going to try connecting it to the switch here. Uh, just to ensure that I'm getting the full speeds through it before I go and deploy it Since it'll be a lot easier to do that here So as you can see we just connected it here uh, And it lost power <laughs> which is funny because um, I was actually powering that over PoE so I'm gonna plug that back in And I'm going to disable it. I just disabled this port on my switch so it won't pass any network traffic through it so this is booting, this is just what it shows when it boots. There you go. Uh, and so we should be connected through the SFP connection here. And uh, we have a connection here to my laptop then too. Uh, I did an upgrade on the switch and it lasted exactly 60 seconds of downtime, which I would say is pretty, pretty good. So like I said, yeah, we're just waiting on this to finish and we'll be able to speed test here on the laptop. Okay, so now we're going to try to plug this in. Theoretically, it should be a redundant power source. So let's just see here. So now we are plugged in through the DC power, and as you can see, yes, it is fully redundant. So it did um, stop taking power here for my switch. As you can see down there, it's not taking power. It has switched over to the DC power, which is really cool. Okay, so now I'm connected on 2.5 gig. We're going to run a speed test. It should not be full 2.5 gig, I believe, because my server uh, usually doesn't do that for some reason. Okay, so now we're going to test the redundant power. I have a feeling this is not going to work because um, I'm pretty sure to get full redundant power you need to use these connectors over here to get 48 volts into the device, but I'm going to try it anyway. So we're going to unplug this power. And let's see. So it does seem like, so I'm still able to ping the device, which is kind of odd. Um, and down there, it is not supplying PoE, so I'm not sure how the switch is still running. Yeah, that's very odd. The switch is still fully operational right now without any power plugged into it. Um, I do not see a PoE light on my switch. Uh, and I have a feeling that if I unplug this... Okay, so it did stop when I unplugged that. But it's really odd that it wasn't showing a PoE status light down there. So I'm not sure, like I said, how it was running, but... Looks like it was running, so that's kind of cool. So that is that, and now I'm going to go deploy the switch. Okay, so the switch is now deployed. One of the power supplies is up there. One is down here. As you can see, the switch is over here. We are powering an access point and four cameras. And uh, yeah, so it is, it is pretty easy to set up. I have two power supplies connected, obviously, and then our fiber that is supposed to be 10 gigabits per second. Although for some reason the transceiver is not wanting to work at all. So I will have to fix that. But for now, we have one gig fiber up here, which is plenty. Um, but I will be upgrading that to 10 gigabit per second fiber very soon. Okay, it's a few days later now. And I have a generic SFP plus module. I say generic because I've never seen this brand before, but it's a 10 kilometer, 13, 10 nanometer, 10 gig module. Uh, I'm hoping that this time I can get them to work with the single mode fiber that I have.
If not, I'm unsure what to do. And we have an activity light on the SFP port, which is fantastic. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that it is working. Although I cannot say for sure. I'm going to have to end my recording to uh, run a speed test very quickly and I will report back. Okay, update. Uh, I have completed the speed test and I'm getting over 300 megabits per second um, over Wi-Fi on my device here, um, which is fantastic because these cameras are also using bandwidth and not that it will saturate a one gig connection, but it is good to know that I am getting the proper bandwidth. Now I'm going to do a test on the redundant power supplies. As you can see, I have one here and one here. I'm going to unplug the power supply and make sure it fails over as expected. Okay, and now I'm going to unplug the other power supply. I'm going to unplug this from the UPS. And as you can see, it also has um, taken that just fine. So that's very good. And one more time. Perfect. So that is the redundant power supply setup. Okay, so that is all I wanted to test today. As you can see, the switch is still fully operational with the 10 gigabit fiber link over the single mode fiber. So that is about it for this video. And thank you for watching this video. And yeah, that's all.